What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Lily May, and it's consulting time, but we're doing a little bit more all things authentic because we are talking about purpose over popularity, advocacy, entrepreneurship, and education. And we're going to get a little urban with you today because I am so fortunate to have someone here that hails from the great city of Richmond, Virginia, where I just love and I love so much. So George Johnson, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm excited. And you got a powerful name. <laughs> that is yeah it is but i appreciate you um i'm excited you know to be here on your platform um i've been thinking i've been i've been really waiting for this oh well i'm excited as well and i want to jump in because i want you to really be able to talk to us about the journey to advocacy because you're talking about a lot of different things and i know we have something major coming up saturday and we're gonna get there but I want to hear you speak. I want to hear you speak about mental health advocacy, resilience and consistency. How did you get to the point where you said, I'm a black man and I'm going to advocate for my well-being? Got you. Um, I think the best way and the, kind of the only way for me to kind of get to that point is just um, speaking about like where I'm from. Cause I think your viewpoint on just how you feel about mental health on connect different of just your upbringing. Um, <clears throat> and really my awakening of just speaking about my journey with mental health just came on my own life. Life brought it to me. I didn't, I wasn't seeking for it. Um, I kind of was pushing it away, but just cause where I'm from being that vulnerable that you can't, you, you, that's not how you maneuver day in and day out from where I'm from. So, you know, showing or speaking on things that's, that's hurting you or you struggling with, you just don't do that. And that's just generational. Like, I remember being hurt when I was little. I'm all like, you better get up, can't be crying. And, you know, that's just the, the motion that we in until you reach a point where, you know, just saying that it, ain't, it don't work and you just break down. Um, uh, go ahead. You wanted me to speak on just me where I'm from? Or? Yeah, well, and and what you just said speaks volumes because I think it's important, especially with everything that's going on around us in 2022, because you know Rico is really out here. You follow me. And so I think it's important to talk about where we're from, but even being set apart where we're from because you can exist in the capacity of who you are and where you're from but sometimes we have to kind of step outside and yeah. really come into our own and George that's what I see from you no for sure and for sure. and and it takes me into double cross because that's what it is yeah, yeah. so yeah. talk to us a little bit about double cross um that's my new book uh, I was it's been out for a while now but we're pushing it um it really it's a story and I, it, some people feel like it's a sad story and it is. I go through a lot of trauma and a lot of things happen, but I try to make it um, impactful on the end of just like my resilience to just keep pushing and pushing and, and I'm learning from and maximizing it and taking advantage of whatever situation that came my way. But, you know, my book is basically about um, I'm a baby boy of five and my two oldest brothers had got into, you know, trouble with the federal government and their way out and the route that they took to help themselves out was to put me in a lot of stuff. And um, what it what it did was just tear apart my family. And, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong wielded guy and I always I'm, a, I'm an athlete. So I was always just not keep going, keep going. But um, I had reached a point where I just I couldn't go no more. And, and it was the mental toll that just the the battle of just fighting the U.S. government and just the the people that you would feel the most comfortable with or you would be vulnerable with or you feel like you can lean on were really my enemies. And so that's what kind of entails of my, my story and I kind of lay it all on the line. Wow, George, now let's just be real. <laughs> you stepped out on faith because you already know, what did we learn? What goes on in this house? Mm -hmm. stays in this house i'm that kid as well so i understand it 
you have to tell the story. And I, I love the fact that I don't feel like you actually told your story. I feel like you told the story that encompassed your story. Because, you know, sometimes we have a tendency not to really dig in. But I love how you were able to pack and unpack to really get these things out. My question to you is, how was it, though, being able to tell your story? And how did your family feel about it? Man, I, I've done a lot of interviews and no one ever angled it or asked me in that capacity. And on the truth of the matter is I didn't I didn't seek out to write a book. It, and I, I tell a lot of people, it's still like a running joke amongst me and my friends. Like, yo, you are an author. You wrote a book because that's not me. If you really know me, it's like, what? He just a basketball guy. He just get money, all that type of stuff. <laughs> right. So um, it this was a therapeutic thing. And, and it was something that I had just started doing with just writing stuff down that I never shared with no one, how I felt about my brothers growing up and how I admired them and wanted to be them growing up and just, you know, just stuff in the midst of like how I felt that that person handled me or did. And so it was just real therapeutic until I looked up and had two notebooks of just stuff that I was just writing down. And so me being an entrepreneur is what made me be like, you know what, I might could turn this into a book. Now, on that journey of creating this book, it did, I did, it get, it got so deep that I was like, I can't even share this. Cause this is gonna, this is gonna like, this is gonna open up the band-aid of what I was getting on the backside of. And so um, it was a turning point where my friend, he actually came out here, he's from Northside as well. He had been in jail for like 10 years, uh, institutionalized guy. And he was watching me do my, one of my first interviews. And he just was like, bro, like, I don't even go to sleep at night because I, I fight. I'm fighting with just stuff that I was in jail for 12 years and everything. He was like, bro, like watching you do that interview made me think about a lot of different stuff. And that is really what inspired me to go ahead and like go ahead and push out my book. Cause I was going to just make it a stuff, a, a stocking stuffer. Like get my mom one, get my man's one, get this girl one. Like, yeah, I'm an author. But he made me be like, yo, like, just me sharing my story just opened up this just this, this flow of just everybody like, yo, that's crazy. And so that's what pushed me to share it. Yeah. Amazing. Guys, this is George Johnson. And <laughs> if you're in Atlanta, you have to be there on Saturday. You have to be there on Saturday. He is going to unveil what's already out but he's gonna unveil it in the atl 44th and third bookseller 2 p.m on saturday and and so i need you to understand that this is important and it's not just important because he's a black man it's important because he's a transparent black man and he's from Virginia. So Virginia is for lovers. That's what it's all about. That's important. <laughs> but George, if you could say anything to your brothers out here, your fellow brothers, you know, in the world about the importance of self-care, what would you say to them? Um, it's a must, man. Um, because uh like I say, especially guys that grew up in the communities, like such a where I'm from, man, niggas carrying a lot. Um, and, and, and you coping with it in certain kind of ways that is just digging an even deeper hole. You know, all my younger guys popping perks and, and, and smoking OD weed all day, every day, you drunk every day. And so you, you never even get to you know, go past whatever you was dealing with because you just digging a deeper hole, coping with it in a certain kind of way. And so I struggled with just, I started getting drunk all the time in the midst of these times or whatever the case may be, that's my being transparent. Um, but when I started to just get this stuff up off of me, right? Like it, it made me know that that stuff happened and, and, and realize what happened and what I could take from it, but like just leave it behind me. And so now, you know, I done left that behind me. I talk about the story in a, in a certain kind of way to, to not re relive it, but to share where I got better at. And I mean, anybody could do that in any kind of way. Wow. Guys, listen, understand something. It doesn't take but a few minutes 
every day to save yourself. Right. Sit down, write it out. We spend countless hours on our phones. Yeah. Use your notepad. Yeah. If George Johnson did it, you can do it too. And he's telling you that. Yeah, that's a fact. He did not use where he's from as a crutch. Well, maybe he did, because you know what the crutch is the kind of, yeah. He propelled himself forward, but he weaned himself off of two crutches to one and now none. And guess what? He's standing strong on his own with his team. Thanks. Thanks. George, I thank you for being here. And in a couple of hours, you are going to be unveiling and having a conversation about Double Cross. I am so excited and I hope that you will continue to write, write, write. But what I want to see, I want to see this book turn into a film. Have a great evening. <laughs> Thank you. Pre